Dr. Patrick Cullinan. Patrick lives by the creed, if something is worth doing, it is worth doing the best of your ability. For starters, Cullinan took classes at COD for a year, and in that time completed two years' worth of credits. The former Marine went to finish two bachelor's degrees with cum laude honors at the University of Illinois and doctorate in osteopathy at Midwestern University. He specialized in not one, but three medical areas, yet still looks back on his learning and experiences at the College DuPage as setting the gold standard for all his endeavors. I'm not sure anything would have stopped Patrick from becoming a very successful person. At an early age, uh, we could see that whatever he participated in, he always did it in a way that he would maximize his success. He's a very strongly driven, high achieving mentality. Patrick had gone out of high school right into the Marines, served for four years, accumulated 70 hours of credit at two different universities while he was in the Marines, and had planned to transfer him to the University of Illinois right upon leaving the Marines. Unfortunately, U of I felt he was short some credits, so he used College of DuPage as his source. He once told me that in all of the college that he received, his best instructors were here. I recall having uh, Patrick as a type of student in my class that came in prepared, energized, wanting to ask questions at the second and third tier, uh, maybe staying after class and uh, discussing a little further something we had done in class. An instructor loves to have uh, one, two, three of those types of students in any class because they happen to be the dynamic that lifts the whole class upward. Out of all the um, doctors that I have trained, which and graduated about 250 or so, you know, Patrick just stands out as one that wanted to do, always do his very best to become a great emergency medicine physician. He was meticulous, conscientious. He always pushed to do better and get other people to do better and do things for the training program to make it better. He links the College of DuPage as one of the key places that helped thrust him forward in his, in his whole professional life. He now refers to his undergraduate learning at College of DuPage as the best experience he'd had in college outside of medical school. Through the course of all of the years that my son has been a participant in whatever event that he is engaged in, Marine Corps, then he came back, came to COD, then he went on to U of I, graduated with honors, then he went to med school, graduated number two, and then five year in his residency, out of 72 residents, he was number one. So I've been given opportunity to be very proud of him on numerous occasions, and this is just one more that I can add to the list. From the class of 1993, please welcome Dr. Patrick C. Cullinan, a 2017 Distinguished Alum. Don't get nervous, it's not that long. It's double spaced. So, so first off, uh, I come here with so much gratitude and humility. Uh, we had a chance to talk earlier today as a panel and uh, I actually am not sure how I got up on the stage with these other six. So I wanna say thank you for allowing me to be a part of your class. Uh, I'm gonna just make a few comments, I promise it won't go very long, but uh, I do wanna first start off with an applause for you. Everybody up here is here because of you and what you gave us. So I'd like to just take a moment to give you recognition. I want to say thank you to the college, College of DuPage. I grew up in Lombard. I knew about College of DuPage from a, a young age. And it, its values, what it stands for in the community, turned out to be very parallel and um, complementary to my own, which I didn't realize when I was growing up. It's a small junior college. I call it small because I kept thinking of the big universities. And so I'd just like to say thank you to the College of DuPage, the professors, specifically Dr. Uh, Dwayne Ross, who really made a huge impact on me coming out of the Marine Corps. And of course, uh, the faculty and the staff, uh, it really, it could say nothing but great things. So let me move in and we'll keep this moving along. 
With gratitude and humility, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you to the veterans. It's veterans, uh, we're getting close to Veterans Day. If I could please have the veterans stand. When I was in the Marine Corps, I thought if you were not a Marine, you were not my equal. That's the mentality, right? <laughs> but when you get out, you realize the sacrifice that all of the veterans, the military, offer to their families, the time away, the low pay, the bad jobs, and the risk. And I am grateful for the sacrifices that they've made, and so I, I think it's important that we recognize them. I'd like my family to stand. Mom, Dad, Louise, family, thank you. It, it is truly the families that are the backbone to our successes. And I could not be here without them. If I could have my friends that have made, taken the time to come, I have baseball coaches, I have friends, please stand up. Yeah, come on, there you go, okay. I saw some of those pictures that were there that I wasn't expecting, and they, they knew me when, and they still are here tonight, so thank you, okay. So I'm gonna give a, a mini skirt address. It'll be long enough to cover the essentials, short enough to keep your interest. I'm gonna move through this. Part of the reason that COD struck me was because our values were very much the same in much of what I learned. I'm going to just highlight a few items that I think have guided and directed me, but a lot of it came because of being here. I lived my life, but I was only given that life by my family and my friends who walked beside me. Many times they stood behind me and pushed me they guided me, they supported me, especially when I screwed up. And I'm sure that you as families did the same for them. And so that's the number one thing I wanna say that I'm thankful for. The foundation to success has to be solid. And it is the friends and the family that we keep around us that allow us to build until we reach a pinnacle that others view as high. But the truth is, it's the foundation that holds us. Money does not define us. It's, it's the process of getting there. It's the important things in life. Money may follow, but that's not what defines who we are. It's our character. Dream big. Even if you miss the stars, you'll land on the moon. I think COD started small and kept dreaming bigger and bigger. And when I walked around today, I saw the campus and how much it had grown. And it is that dreaming big that keeps us growing. Risk, take it. You gotta take the risk, otherwise there is no major reward. When they're expanding this campus, they don't know whether they're gonna fill this school or not, but they took the risk. When I think about the programs that they opened, that was risk, and the risk is paying off. You can't be afraid of that risk or to leave home there's great adventure out there and it is the leaving home that one, makes you value where you came from, but two, gives you the opportunities that you would never have. Not every challenge, promotion, or opportunity is worthy of your time. That was something that took me a long time to learn. It's only in the last couple of years I feel like I've created better balance because I'm starting to realize that we can spend our energy, our time on a lot of things that are not worthy of it and the important things friends and family are, and too many times we sacrifice, sacrifice from them. Even though we are always looking at the destination, it's really the journey that we look back on and appreciate. Many times we get someplace and we go, it's not what I thought it was gonna be, but the journey is what we remember. And I'm very thankful for the journey that took me through COD to get me else other places. 
Never give up. Even when you think that you can't make it, you never quit. I'm going to tell just a quick story. I went out hiking with my wife, nine-year-old, seven-year-old, and four-year-old. I ended up carrying my four-year-old on my back. It was a six-mile hike. And there was this hill about mile five. And we're going up, and it kind of winded. And my wife is angry. She's angry at me. She's angry at everybody. <laughs> and my middle, my seven-year-old was frustrated too. He was tired, pouting. And there was a bench. And my wife says, we're just going to sit down. You go ahead and go to the top where the, this wooden tower was. And I stopped, and I didn't say anything. And I gave her a chance to catch her breath, which many times we have to do. And I said to her, do you think you can make it? And she goes, that's fine. Let's do it. And we go up and we get up there and it was only like another 300, 400 yards, but you couldn't see the finish line. And when we got there, she goes, oh, I didn't know how close it was. That's right. You don't always know how close you are to the finish line if you quit. So sometimes when it looks like you can't quite make it, keep pushing. Surround yourself with the items, the people, the things that fill your heart, that complete you, that make you happy. Because we all need times to regenerate ourselves, to recharge. And when you're surrounded by those items, it gives you an opportunity to do that and to reflect back on where you've been, where you're going, who you're with, and whether you're actually on the right path. This is it. In closing, I have one word that I believe defines my thought process. I have it hanging up on the wall in my office. Persistence. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The word is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. Calvin Coolidge. I think those are really strong words to live by. I want to say thank you again for allowing me to be here, to recognize me for um, what, what's been accomplished, but more importantly, for just letting me be a part of this. Thank you.